Hello and welcome to Chem 101, Chemistry and the Computer. My name is Dr. Grazioli and I'll be your professor for this course. And I'm really excited to be the professor for this course because as a computational chemist, using computers to better understand chemistry and solve problems in chemistry is exactly what I love to do. And hopefully by the end of this course, uh, you'll also learn to love to do this as well. But I don't want you to get the impression that this course is only for computational chemists because computers are used extensively in every area of chemistry. Uh, to give you an example, analytical chemists have long used computers to both control their instrumentation and to help them interpret the results that come out of the instruments in the end. As you've probably guessed, we're going to be using our computers quite a bit in this course and we're going to be writing some code but I don't want you to think that you have to have any experience writing code. If you've never written a single line of code in your life, that's totally fine. You don't need to have any experience uh, programming to take this course. Uh, you will, however, need to have regular access to a computer and it has to be a computer onto which you can install and run things like Microsoft Excel and a Python interpreter, uh, preferably the Anaconda distribution of Python. So if you look up the system requirements for this software, that'll give you an idea of what you need in terms of a computer. And of course, please feel free to email me if you have any questions about this. A detailed list of the topics we'll be covering in this course can be found in the syllabus, so please read the syllabus. Um, but just to mention a few of the things we'll be covering, uh, we're going to be working with Excel quite a bit. So we'll be storing and manipulating chemical data sets in Excel and, and making plots to try and understand what the data is telling us visually. And we'll also use Python to do uh, similar functions. And the reason we'll be learning to use both tools is that depending on your data set, in particular the size of the data set, sometimes it makes more sense to use one tool or another, and I want you to be trained in using multiple tools for uh, carrying out these functions. Another topic we'll be covering is creating 3D renderings of molecular structures using software. And this is really fun to do actually because it's a bit like uh, making an animated film in that you know you can change the angle of the molecule you can change like the simulated camera angles or even the lighting and uh but it's not just for fun right this is uh this is actually really helpful if you're trying to gain intuition for the structural properties of a molecule these 3d renderings can be super helpful and if you can create uh, a little movies that you can put in your presentations so that when you're trying to explain some spatial property of a molecule to your audience, you can show an animated film where you know, you're sort of flying around the molecule and, and looking at it from different angles. Uh, not only does it bring a wow factor to your presentation, uh, it really helps people understand uh, the spatial properties. As I mentioned, we'll be using Python to do data visualizations and other techniques with chemical data. So this means we're going to have to learn to write some code in Python. And as I said, you don't have to have any experience in doing this before. You'll learn everything you need to know, which means that we're going to have to spend some time learning some fundamentals of writing code. One other topic that I wanted to mention that's near and dear to my heart is that of molecular simulations. So we're going to be covering, uh, running a little bit of molecular simulations and also learning a bit how they work. So what's a molecular simulation? Well, if you can embed a set of laws of physics into a computer code, then you can simulate how molecules and atoms move relative to each other. And this may sound a bit foreign to you, but you've probably experienced something very similar to it if you've ever played any sort of video game where a character is, is running around in some environment and let's say they, they can run around and they can jump up and down, right? Well, when they jump up and down, they look like they're actually interacting with a, a gravitational field, right? Like when they jump and then they land, it looks pretty natural uh, that they're interacting with some gravitational field on whatever planet they're on. Right? Well, the reason for this is that the developers who created the game have embedded in their code some law of gravitation. So it's a similar thing uh, that we can apply to molecular simulations as well. And then if you combine that with the visualization techniques that I mentioned, you can create some really cool videos of how molecules interact with each other in the simulation. And that's another exciting thing that we're going to cover in this course that I'm really looking forward to. As for the format of this course, the course is going to be completely online and I'm also going to be teaching the course asynchronously. So what this means is that rather than all of us having to sign into Zoom at the same time and then you watching like a live feed of me giving a lecture or something like that, I'm going to pre-record 
uh, materials such as the video you're watching now and upload those for you to watch when it's convenient for you to watch them. And I'm also going to assemble materials from other creators from around the web as well. So each week you'll have a, a set of materials uh, to review. Regarding the graded materials for this course, the bulk of your points are going to be earned by completing projects. So the spirit of this course is going to be project-based learning. Our motto is going to be learn by doing. Right? This, is, this is sort of the approach uh, for one of your math classes. Right? If you attend to the math class and you watch the professor solve a problem on the board and you feel like you get it and then you sit down and try to do it yourself and you realize that maybe you didn't quite get it as well as you thought you got it, then you practice the problems and then you really get it. Right? It's a similar thing with uh, applying computational techniques. You really have to learn by doing it. So that's why most of your points are going to be from completing projects. So the focus is going to be on projects. At the same time, uh, I do want to make sure that you're picking up some of the basic skills as we go. So I'll have some, some quizzes uh, scattered uh, throughout the semester. And there will also be a final exam. But the bulk of the points will be uh, from projects. And of course, you can check the syllabus uh, if you want to see um, how many points everything is worth. One other graded material that we'll have is a pretest in the very beginning, but this will only be graded on completion. Uh, it's really just for me to try and understand what you know coming into the course so that I can adjust the course uh, for the students in the class. I would also like to add that even though this course is going to be taught online and asynchronously, I'm going to provide uh, plenty of opportunities for you to interact with me. So of course you can always email me and I'm also going to have office hours every week and so we're going to be able to communicate plenty, uh, particularly as you work on your projects. I'm going to be able to help guide you with that as well. So we're going to interact plenty. Don't worry about that. So once again, welcome to Chem 101, and I'm really looking forward to meeting you all soon.